I'm telling you, I could go straight to new generation broccoli head so fast naturally. I could put gel in my hair, broccoli head, in the gym, tripod, Bass Pro Shop hat on, dude. You know? Don't know how to drive a stick shift. Never change a spare tire. I sound like this because of this and probably because of this. Uh, it is after New Year's right now. Uh, our spec truck project is complete. Um, I've been sick. I, I'm that guy that calls people names for being sick. Um, and I got my ass kicked over the last like five days. So uh, Joey and I set up to film this thing today and we're gonna just power through it no matter what. So you can deal with that kind of voice thing. Um, but, you know, we want to cover this in full. Uh, happy Monday. Uh, some of these episodes, I don't know where this fits in. Some of these episodes, I talked a lot about the shapes of the arrow and some of the tin work on here. And um, explained a lot about aerodynamics and flow and why things look the way they do. And, and you know, with Kevin, um, he, he paid for myself to learn under someone under Ben Walker um, and to be educated and, and work through the whole this whole car every treatment on this car like obviously not like an exhaust bezel but all of the appendages that you see on here are for a reason they are I mean the you get the looks cool win for sure but that's not the the actual process here it's actually the functionality first um, and then the style follows that and it just happens to look cool just like a Formula One car does or something um, depending on the years the what I'm getting at with that is we filmed a couple of these episodes we've been missing some uh, and it's because uh, we got to figure out a way to censor some of that like we don't I, I was contracted to do this work um, and put my design into this stuff but I was also um, working with Ben and, and they paid someone to have this input and I think that with this being such a competitive class there's a concern of people picking up knowledge for free uh, on this stuff now I, you know I don't have any discretion on that or have an opinion on that but I can at least respectfully honor that um, Kevin has asked to not share all of the details uh, as to why this does this and why the air needs to go through here and what needs to happen here and what's going to happen here and why it's going to stabilize this and that kind of talk um we're gonna we'll dive into this thing right now fully but we'll just cover shapes and finish work and everything we can um this thing has man it has been a a ton of time and resources especially on the last poll uh, and it just made more sense to stop everything we had and finish strong on this and and we did and we'll get into that right now what i'm doing it, it's cold out it feels like it should snow and i always say that like if we're in southern california and it's this kind of cold where the fuck is the snow just make it snow this is bullshit my fingers are cold like happy gilmore's grandmother so uh, i'm gonna strip this thing down i got just the tricky fender washers off the top like the the roof panel is the only thing that kind of stays on here and what we'll do is we'll do like a terminator on this thing we'll pull off this side and scope it out because i think the most fresh look on this thing is is the tin work truggy style but at least we'll be able to see both sides and cover both sides This is the money right here. Bear with me. This is the voice we get. 
This is all we got, okay? Make whatever sick jokes you want. It's fine. This is the voice we get. Uh, this is our window to shoot this. The sun actually came out when we were talking a little earlier. Uh, it was on that snow temperature level, so now we're better. This is the best presentation, I think, of this thing. Uh, I'm not going to talk about my voice being screwed up. Just we're covering it now, and that's it, and then I'm going to start talking. And then I'm going to put something in here to make it better. Uh, <clears throat> when we got this thing, we got it um, last, I want to say last November. Um, we've had it for... 11 or 12 months. We didn't work on it for 11 or 12 months. Kevin contacted me way prior to uh, bringing the car in. And originally we were gonna just do <clears throat> like a small sheet metal package and some tin work. Uh, we did talk about doing some stuff off the back, but really it wasn't to build the whole car out. This is an Everson chassis. So we didn't build the actual rolling chassis uh, or the suspension or any of that. What, what we got, and I think you can backtrack to some of the earlier episodes on this, but what we got is just the bare bones minimum. <clears throat> Gosh, dude, I got like a nose delete and a throat delete at the same time, and I can't pop my ears. Very cool. So what we got before, uh, when we started, was just shock mounts, um, and everything that makes the car pivot and steer, um, nothing else. And Kevin kind of showed up and asked, he said, can you do the whole thing? Um, meaning, can we build this entire car uh, and tab everything and package everything? And I said, yep, of course. Um, throughout that process, it's been a journey. Um, I you know, with everything like this, this channel is about a story. It's not, you know, I didn't have an intention to create a YouTube channel based off of um, just marketing or, or selling something to someone. It's really just about a story. And so that's why I can sit here, we can talk about this and we can go through what a journey it's been because each one of these, I, I don't care about anybody else's life experiences like this for, for our passion in our business each one of these does represent some sort of a story and and there's always challenges with it you know there's always a lot of wins um, and when I got this you know I was overwhelmed with how to package this I know Kevin just the day he brought this and dropped it off he had every Kevin's extremely organized uh extremely thorough on things I am sure it's a blessing and a curse but you know, I, I felt that way right off the bat and he had every single part, every single itemized listed, you know, in what boxes and what's in what box. And, you know, every single thing was the best of the best, uh, and very exciting, but also very overwhelming. Um, and why it's overwhelming is we've never built a trophy truck. Um, the, you know, a competitive trophy truck needs to be something where you put thought into everything you don't want to shit the bed like i i know for us design we can get a lot of functional design but building a competitive race car is like that next level of functional design and you know that's that was the biggest challenge is like how do we put this thing together where it's it's ergonomically friendly and it's serviceable and it's not just beautiful but it it's it's proper for a race car application uh, and that's where we started Throughout this process, uh, especially this, this build in particular, uh, it's been hard to document all of the work and there's so much, like we constructed an entire vehicle, every single tab, um, every single accessory, every single bracket, it's, it's super complex. And I know we haven't been like fully kept up on updates uh, where we, like this started with a breakdown, right? Me list, typical shit list um, what we're gonna what we've done what we're gonna do um you know and like a walkthrough like that and it really it started to get momentum where we would get so much done in, in small amounts that like there's so much here i don't know if there's a way to actually cover everything on here uh, or if i even can right now but now we're at this stage where it's done uh it's it's fully complete it's as complete as it's going to be on our end um, all the tin work as beautiful as this is, is also 
something where you need to invest in some kind of replacement with this tin work. This is not stuff that I would want to do again on this car. Uh, it's stuff that needs to be made out of carbon fiber. So everything is going to go to EBCO. Uh, Danny's going to take care of all, replacing all this, doing molds for all this. Um, and this whole entire car will be carbon. So everything that's silver and shiny will turn into carbon fiber, um, which will also have its own beautiful presence. So we have half the skins off right now. Dude, I hate listening to this. Um, it's already bad as it is. I have like a very bro voice and now this, I don't even want to know what this sounds like on audio. Um, lighting package. I don't think we even covered this stuff. So there is 22 XL80s, forward facing XL80s. There's a 40 inch amber bar in here. Uh, there's two of these little S2s. These are blue S2s. These are just indicator lights. This is kind of a light that stays on all the time that just resides in this pocket here. Uh, and that's going to be something that just distinguishes this car um, from, you know, all the other cars in the class. Uh, you'll know if you're at a pit, you'll know when it's coming from afar. It's, it's, your, it's your signature light, right? Um, just like on an airplane or something. What would that be called for an airplane? Not a taxi light. It's just your full time. Someone get get us. Just just shoo on you. Uh, and then we have rear facing stuff. Small package. I don't know if you guys have seen these. These are an eight inch version of an RTL. They're called RTL Mini. And then just S ones. So those kind of fit in there nicely. Uh, and then I think. Let me figure out the count. I want to say there's 22 service lights in here. Uh, service lights, some people call them rock lights, but just a smaller light to uh, provide some kind of light source at night to look at things and service things. Um, so that counts for all the interior stuff too. I was going to take the front panels off. The guard here, <clears throat> this is just a guard. So like this wouldn't be something you'd run with the lights. This is just something that's here to cover them uh, during the daytime. And then obviously you come into pit and you'd pop these things off and move out. Okay. This is all designed too. So when the actual body panels are on here, you can pop through here. It's a larger hole. You can pull the buttons out so you don't have to pull the body panels out to get the covers off. So the actual bar here, this 40 inch bar, the amber, uh, and the, these two XL80s here, there's actually provisions for two more, but this whole thing is on an actuator. There's a bell crank in here. If you can see that stuff, I'm hoping you can. Oh, this is a all bell crank with bushings in it. And then there's an actuator hiding back behind here. Uh, and that's full adjustment of that middle control. Now the outsides, one, two, three, four on each side, those are fixed, uh, but that whole middle section will actually pivot, uh, you know, and be positionable. Kind of see there's a pretty good tunnel through here. Um, that's all part of the flow too. You can see the reservoirs for the coilovers are in here. And that goes all the way through and then it directs air out the top of this thing. Uh, one thing to also look at is all of the mesh. Um, this is something that we kind of planned for earlier uh, on the build, but this mesh is all stainless. It's all cut. It's custom uh, per each opening. The, the floors have a bigger opening there for pass through. Um, and you can kind of see like the scale pretty large. Um, that's also 90 thou stainless steel. All of it's stainless, but that's 90. Like it's, it can take rocks for sure. Uh, all the containment panels are in here, but they all share this, this same style where um, you can't see the front, but the rear has a built-in return. And you can see how there's like a, there's a parameter frame 
that runs all the way through here. Uh, the actual honeycomb goes past the, the reveal of the opening on the, on the front side of the panel. And then there's a nice perimeter frame to mount all the hardware to. So all these are laser cut. They're all in file. So if you have to get a replacement, um, you know, it's an easy, it's just a number and cut and paste and you're good to go. So all of them are trimmed like that. Now, just since we're on the subject of sheet metal right now, I'm going to empty out my pockets because I'm going to dump them when I lean over. All right, let's go under this thing. Uh, you can see there's complete enclosure. Um, you know, one of my favorite details on this thing is also this cut, this pass through. So you have your B pillar tube here and it kind of spans out. There's also a lot more chassis tube laying into this area. Uh, but really this pass through allows for cooling. Um, it allows for a lot of the extraction of the headers and the exhaust to pass through, but then it gives a nice pocket to go right into the shocks and add cooling for them. Uh, and that's kind of how all the panel flows is it doesn't really go in front of anything. It all falls behind. You can see there's some openings in here um, that are for functional design, but it also added a great place to detail out safe craft bottles and the reservoirs and kind of adds a design element of like a, it breaks up all this material and adds some space. There's just a lot of little things. Um, it's it's hard to cover everything. Like I said, like even, you know, these are these are our window net mounts, and all this stuff is you know this acts as a gusset as well. So this is all 125 wall chrome ollie. Light bar bracket. This is using Armada's. This is like a, a like a latching style clevis or like a saddle. So. There's no actual hardware that holds this light bar in. It, when it rotates, you do a quick release pin on the actuator here, uh, and then that frees this thing. And when this thing dumps forward, this slotted piece in here, that it comes right out this groove, and this whole thing just comes out. So it's, there's no actual tools or anything needed. Um, these were a quick hit for mirrors. Um, we talked roughly about doing like a nice big fabricated mirror piece like an OG like Mexico pre-runner would have but the amount that this thing needs to stick out is not enough to have so much structure and it just functionally didn't make sense so we took your off the shelf like your Cartex style mirror and just made new base plates um, these are our typical like saddle base plates uh, where there's you know this is like a tube saddle and it's got just a slight channel for the hose clamp with shrink wrap on it um, and then that adds for adjustment if like a you know a bush or something tags this this will slap in and it's not the end of the world and even if this thing breaks off then your your actual saddle will still be on here and you just replace the cheap part i'm just going to kind of i think that's the format here like I've, i was figuring out how to talk about this thing and i think that i'll just I can go through it and when I see stuff, it'll be like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. And we'll just do squirrel details uh, until we go back and, and talk and greater, um, when we pan out and talk, I'm looking for Joey for advice on using more than stuff. <laughs> uh, something we added to, there, there's a weird finish on these arms and I don't know, this. they came like this and they've kind of gotten worse but i don't know what that is or if that was like some machining fluid on there but what i wanted to focus on was this addition um, and you can see there's a tab up here so what goes on with the agm jacks which are centrally located in here so those jacks are 36 inches i believe um, if you want to follow that all the way down we can go right under here and you can see them here so that's the base plate for them. Um, they're loaded at an angle right now, but this thing swivels once it comes down. And the, the thing is these trucks, they have so much travel that if you engage that jack and lifted the whole thing up, you'd still probably wouldn't get out of the limit straps. 
um, and you'd just be lifting the entire chassis from the tire. So there's pickup points on the rear here. We built these and added these. And then there's a, a tab here. And this is a, you know, this is the same design that you'll see on the front. And what this does is this is gonna have like a typical tab for a limit strap. And then on the other side of the limit strap would be like a carabiner, like a clip style carabiner. And what you do is you'd have it, you'd have it bolted here and it would live here. And it would be a service loop that would come over and it would clip into this bigger slot. That's why that's an easier opening like this. And then you'd undo it and then boom, you'd clip it into here. Um, and there'll be enough leeway where if the, if the truck is a little cattywampus, you can still clip it on here. It doesn't have to be tight. But what it does is then once you're connected to the sway bar arm like this and the chassis, or when you're connected to the, to the upper arm, trying to not get the sun to botch this. When you're connected to the upper arm in the chassis, then you start to lift that one side up and the tires have a temporary limit strap that's gonna make the tires actually leave the ground. One of the features that I enjoyed on this thing was following the exhaust routing with the tin work. And you can kind of see like the step rolls follow all that, you know, and everything has its line. Um, this, is, this is your, entrance step into the car um, it does stick out a little past like if you put the body on here you'd have a little bit of stick out uh, and that's really just so when you're sliding your foot down like on on the fiberglass here that'll give you a better idea so when you're sliding your foot down you know a lot of times there's just there's a hole and then the, this actual tube is inset. And I think it's just a little easier to catch and grab. Um, and this also acts as a great protection for the exhaust. Um, but it's a little easier for Chris, co-driver, to, to find this um, in times where he has to get out quicker and not take the time to actually find, you know, get your foot in there. Um, let's go back. So following all the panel work, um, we kind of talked about a lot of the honeycomb paneling. And what I want to do is I want to get under and show you the underside that's very similar to that stuff. All right. This is one of my favorite views under here. You can just see there's a lot of good design, a lot of flow. So you can see all the service lights hiding in here. Uh, these panels are designed to come off in priority based areas. So we know like this rear panel, um, this is, I know we're looking upside down, but what we're looking at here is, that'll give you a better idea. Uh, that rear panel for sure doesn't need to come out hardly ever. Um, this next panel, which is, this is all one, right? So it's like a, it's it's this perimeter and it goes in here uh, and that doesn't really need to come out either but really the servicing these coolers uh, and, and having <clears throat> the radiator accessible the trans cooler accessible and definitely you know the start of your hard lines you can see the the water lines are in here a lot of good symmetry everything's on wiggins clamps uh, if you guys haven't heard of wiggins clamps you can look them up they're you know, they seem like they're an unattainable thing, but they're really easy to get. And there's a ton of, you know, motorsport stores that sell clamps, but they're kind of the highest level of a sealed clamp you can get. And they're great for all kinds of different lines. Um, you know, you can kind of see a lot of tin work under the floors, uh, big tunnels, underdrive, and just, you know, like I said, the symmetry here, you get a lot of good flow. Something else to note is the limit straps have their own little parachute hole through here, um, you know, with provisions for movements. The clevises, the clevises are actually located way up in there, um, but you know, it's kind of cool because they just hang down here ghosted. You can just remember, I don't know if we, oh, I think we did. We covered like our strike pads. Um, that was all earlier stuff. Uh, always, this is kind of your new standard, is running triple straps on the back. 
and then doubles on the front. Here's a bigger skid here. Uh, this is actually something that came with the car. This is a big 3 16 piece, uh, you know, and then more service lights kind of integrated into everything. The service lights, there's even one, I think, up in here above the trans tail shaft. Uh, but those are just crucial, you know, at night or in the pits, uh, or if there's something going on where you have to stop on the track, you can essentially turn all these on and, and scope every single piece of your landing gear, running gear, powertrain, drivetrain, all that. So um, let's pop out of this thing. One of the last bouts of work that we had signed up with, with Kevin was to do the arrow work and the rear arrow in particular. And that's kind of why I have this just on this section. Um, I did a series of drawings early on with the car, uh, sketches, side profile sketches, um, really just silhouettes um, and, and graphic breakup sketches of like just ideation. Um, I think I did three sheets. Uh, with six examples per sheet uh, and then we started tailoring that and I showed that to Ben Walker and what one actually looks like it makes the most sense for aerodynamics um, and this shape was really what we what we signed off on and and that's what I pressed on originally <clears throat> we were gonna like I had this idea to just kind of keep it simple and I was actually just gonna run this this interior skin and not have anything three-dimensional and it just didn't make sense for for what the car needed um, and also for like finishing strong I want to get into the journey with this thing but right now I'm just kind of covering the details I think I got a little more voice back which is great I'm sorry for that I really am but I just I feel like we need to cover the car you know when it leaves to get plumbing and carbon it's it's too special of a vehicle it's too much of a time stamp with the business and the brand to not like use our time whether i sound like shit or not to to talk about it and see it off properly so there's a view that we're missing here um there's obviously a wing on here this is something we need to talk about as well if you look from the back it's profound it's a straight up trophy truck with a wing um, you know we'll we'll talk about that in a little bit here but I want to get up on the car and show you guys a different perspective because the good stuff is up here just gotta watch where you step there we go. So this is where there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, <clears throat> not just for design, but for actual functional flow. Uh, and right now what I'm standing, so I'm standing on the Starlink. There's a mount for the Starlink here. And you can kind of see like the radiator hiding under there. But really, if you look like we're at, we're at the B pillar here, uh, and then rearward, you get that. <clears throat> and you know, for, for me as, you know, as a designer um, and studying design, uh, this is a very profound styling and, and shape package going on back here. And it's really worked out. It's definitely like these big runners. Um, those are over 80 inches long, the side pieces. Uh, there's, mul there's multiple welded seams in there. Um, and it's it, that definitely like, that was maybe one of my biggest undertakings. I've never built a full body on a car. Uh, a lot of the sand car guys, it's very easy for them and, and kind of routine. But for myself, this, uh, this was an undertaking and it was a journey. You can see the fill for coolant for the radiator. What we also did is we designed a substructure system in here. So you can see where the supports are for the wing. Uh, and there's there's a big X that goes through here. So when I want to get down in here, I can actually step right on this area, right? So it's not just tin work. 
and it's safe to come in here and you know if say you're on the track and you need to get something or you need to check something we have custom uh, fluid tanks that we made so these are one gallon fluid tanks there's four of these so you got four gallons of extra fluid on board uh, and these guys are accessible from this little area looks very skinny in the camera um, and you know that was just kind of the, one of the last bouts of work is just to have matching fluid tanks where they're just not off the shelf plastic guys but even through here you can see there's a lot of symmetry something to consider too is just how much final assembly there is on this thing we really we signed up to to build the car uh, and, and mount all the stuff. But, you know, we ended up final assembling everything. Like the shocks are loose for a reason because they need to get valved before and, and they have to get torn apart before they actually get used on the car. So that's the only thing that we didn't actually tighten, but like everything is fresh hardware. Like, you know, everything's anti-seize. Um, just like every single bolt is proper for the car. Um, all of the hose clamps have shrink wrap on them and that's really something we didn't even include in any of like the billing or anything it was just something we ended up doing and um that itself is a journey because it like i thought we were going to be done in four or five days and just like all of the little loose ends and it you know it gets you every time i think and it teaches you lessons as far as what you need to do while you're building something you can really move through a project and it might seem fast where you're you're checking all these things off the box but if you're not finalizing them or getting them 90 percent good and then you're moving to the next one and you say you say you do something mount this and you just use clecos or a temporary fastener on something and you don't set it up for a nut plate or you don't drill it out to the right size uh, you call that call that a 90 percent done thing and then you go and you do 10 more things that are 90% done then all of those last tailings of, of the small like projects and tasks they all add up and that's what we did we just we ended up chasing stuff on this thing for four or five weeks straight of just assembly uh, and people you know I know people that do this stuff they understand that and a lot of people that don't that that last part of putting cars together is where it's so crazy because it might look like nothing's getting done and you're just wrapping up every single detail and that's what we had been doing for like like i said four or five weeks straight of the car was done fabrication was done but it wasn't all the way done it was still chasing little things and then figuring out all the proper hardware figuring you know like cutting hose clamps like heat treating all the hose clamps like just every little detail all of like i had a ton of these things where even like this hardware that i showed you guys right like all the 1024s all that stuff was just clicked on or it wasn't final um so we just had to chase everything like that you know and like look at all the hose clamps they're all clocked and they're all in the same location and square you know so the symmetry is dialed um, there's there's a lot of little details like that to notice on this thing um, that we're just an overwhelming amount of time I think one thing we should cover is going to be the wing um, for sure. That's <clears throat> I remember big Ollie, <clears throat> which was like an old Bronco. And it had this, I don't care what anybody says. It was ugly as fuck, ugly ass, dumb wing, like a, like off of very similar, like what old semi trucks used to have. Like they have this big, like teardrop looking thing. So um, this, there might have been some other cars or race cars that have had actual wings, like functional wings, but I don't remember any recent ones. Um, and we have some pretty high hopes for this thing. So it's structural, like this whole thing, this is all built like it's chrome Ollie, uh, one inch mains, three quarter inch stringers. So it's literally just a skin, like it's, 
It's something that's just uh, like a frame and then there's actual skins, top and bottom. And then the side plates themselves, those are heavier. Those are heavier. So they're like an eighth inch. But um, I, you know, there's, like I said earlier, there's only so much I can cover as far as the whys and, and hows. Um, and the, the wing kind of falls in place with some of that stuff too. Couple more details. Um, stainless saddle bolting into the chassis here to hold the exhaust, right? Um, there's a little standoff here. So exhaust exit, I stray away from the typical, <coughs> what do you call that, an elephant trunk? Like, give me a peanut looking thing. You know, I'll just cut two things and put it out. Like, there's such wins to be had every time you do some kind of exit for an exhaust. Um, with the Truggy, the Truggy's got a gnarly one. Vivian's obvi obviously got a gnarly one. And they do make a difference. Like the idle is different and the wide open throttle is different. They, something pings off of this exit um, that you can actually tune the note a little bit by your cuts. Um, but this is really to favor the styling of the car. I'll kind of run to the other side and show you how that integrates into the actual bodywork. So that's just your bezel to not have the fiberglass be suspect to having uh, high temps. Um, and then you can see how this thing kind of flows, does its thing. The other thing that's kind of trick here is that, you know, when we cut this relief here, because there's no returns back here, uh, when we cut the relief, this is all floppy dick. So there's a standoff here that actually just picks up on one of the bolts for the bezel so you don't actually have another piece of hardware that looks like it's specifically holding this. It's all just integrated into the same thing. This whole car is laced with stuff like that. There's all kinds of little Easter eggs um, on the whole car. And I know I'll forget a ton of them, but it is what it is. Uh, you can see the jack handles integrated into here. This is your classic spring-loaded style jack handle. Um, it's, it's hanging on here. And then you just unpin it. This is just some bullshitty pin here um, that'll get replaced, but this thing just hang out, um, you know, and then pop that thing, push, push in a little bit and it comes right out. Tracks lay in here. This, this like, we knew the, the deck height on this and what that was gonna be. So there was ample room to package stuff on top. The tracks and the jack kind of just live there. That's just for clearance. Um, the Safecraft bottles, this is my favorite style clamp. Um, they have a really good chassis clamp. We have two five pounds in the back here. Uh, and then there's provisions for mounts in the front. But there's just no bottles here. Um, you know, again, to scope out some of the tin work. There's just good little details. Like that's your power steering filter. That's your bypass reservoir. Uh, something else we needed to incorporate was the steering stop. So there's a big, there's like more, there's newer welding here. And I don't know if you can see, but we had to, we modified the center link here. Uh, it's got a big swing steer from Everson. Um, the center link has stops on it. And then there's like a big spine that goes in the chassis. And I know it's hard to see. Um, but that's all tied in now and it added a superior amount of strength to this area, but it also adds a, a actual physical stop in the steering instead of something that's built into the box. Um, we had to really negotiate where we were going to put stuff like that and where it was going to work. But that was our, our most optimal hit for that stuff. all the stuff. Same thing with the limit straps up here. That's your clevis kind of floating in there. And they just have an opening. And you know, the winds too, I like to be able to, you know, you could just do whatever this requires as an opening, but you can really just get little style hits and shape these a little differently. And, and it helps with the overall design of the car. Um, there's a really cool intersection up here where all the panels kind of come together. There's just a lot of stuff going on, but everything's, you know, the flow came together so well with this thing. You can see, see to the rear of the car, through the floors there. But you know, full containment, full containment panels, 
Um, you know, this will this will allow for things to breathe. It'll also allow for the heat from the engine to to exhaust out, um, but it will block debris. Um, you know, debris to an extent. Like if if there's a bunch of sand, sand will go in, but sand will also come out. There's a lot of reliefs, um, just like towards the rear pivot here, where stuff can come out. It's not just trapped in tin work. If you guys have questions about the slapper arm here, the secondary A arm, um, we have a short about that, and we also covered that in one of the episodes. So just if you go back on the spec truck episodes, you'll see that. So this is a fully dressed interior right now. These are custom window nets. Um, this is something the impact would build for you guys. Uh, you know, like, I, and I know some of our demographic here, you guys already build cars and you know all this shit and you know, take what you need and leave the rest. Um, for some people that are just interested in this in general, um, impact and a couple other companies, if you send them the template, they'll build you custom nets. Um, you know, these have a, these have a radius in them just because of the roof line having the same radius, but this is fully dressed in here. Something else I think we covered before is the GPS here. So, you know, this thing is right in your face, um, and it's right in your lap and that's what you want. Right. But what we have is we have a pull knob here. That's also on a bell crank, the same as the actuator. So this goes, and then it just locks all the way down there. And what that does is that that lets you have all that room to get in and out, especially in an emergency when you need to dump out of this thing quick or hop back in it. Um, that thing just goes all the way forward and then you're not doing any leg stuff. And then what's so nice is when you get in, boom, you can pull that thing and lock it right back into your lap. And I'll show you why that's so important. Something else to see is an electronics tray hidden behind here. Uh, there's an inverter for the Starlink. When this thing folds down, it's full clearance and I can get my hand in there and I can service everything. All the PDMs will be in there for the MoTeC uh, and a couple other, like a dual half bridge will be in there. You can see there's batteries hanging out, one per side. You can see the dead pedal with three levels of adjustability. This is where the ECUs will go with a redundant ECU. This is the brain for the race radio. And then fluid logic bottles, real quick smash and grab on these things and the pumps. So these are just easy things for a pit crew to pull and get out quick. Um, same thing if they want to be here, uh, they can go in here and unplug or plug. Same if they want to get, like we said, to the to the ECU mounts here. Like this is all stuff where a, a co-driver can access it and also someone can just come and a co-driver can be chilling, doing other things and they can come and swap stuff. This is a good example of getting into this thing. There's a lot of room for your knees. You know, and then this thing just goes up. I think it needs to lock. There we go. And then it's in place. Um, and, the, and what's important about this, you know, is, is your hands being able to operate. You want this thing close where you can operate the buttons. The further away the GPS is, the more leverage your hands will have flopping around and less control you'll have actually plotting things in here. Um, it's the same with the reach on this. This is all laid out to be perfect for your reach. Uh, the fire poles, so there's two fire poles because there's two bottles. Um, one is on each side of, of this center stack, but the nice part is you can reach this side from the, from the passenger seat, right? So if I, like if there's an emergency and you need to pull this one and you need to pull this one, I already have my hand on it. Like I'm already sitting fully postured like with a shoulder belt in at an angle where my shoulder belt would be in uh, where I could grab both of these guys. So, you know, all the accessibility for tuning and mapping is all easy to get to, but out of the way, um, all shielded. It's the same thing. This is kind of your view. Uh, you know, from the outside, it looks like these are tall, but when you're actually sitting here, you have quite a bit of angle. Um, a lot of the this lip was cut on the top roof panel. Um, so, you know, you see the light bar, but if, if this wasn't cut, you wouldn't even see the light bar. You'd just see fiberglass for the roof. 
You can see the actuator for the light for the upper light bar hanging out. Uh, the thing with this, this actuator lives on the car. So you know, it's a really quick thing. It's a reach here. It's this pin. You pop this thing, then you move the actuator right into this tab. Uh, this lanyard, this would just be riveted onto the car somewhere, wherever they choose. Uh, and you know, the pin will fall out and then boom, take the actuator off and you just lock that thing back in. And this thing's hiding behind the pillar safe um, for when it goes on next. You can see all the consoles back up and in here for the upper. And then these guys have push button activation as well. So if you have all the rock lights on and say, say this thing's too bright or something or you can't have it on, then you can turn it off. It's just like a little override. Uh, not all of them have that. But these are your, your less used controls, um, especially the radio face like that. You're not really adjusting your channel much um, throughout what you're doing. And then this is your, your AC blowers for your helmet. So um, these are easy to get to, you know, and they're just, it's a very natural thing. Um, but everything is, is kind of um, isolated per, per needs for the driver and for the passenger. You can see all the filters in here. <clears throat> Walker Industries filter uh, with a pre-filter on it. Fresh guy. You can kind of just see the tin work through here. It just never stops. There's just layers of, of tin work and um, honeycomb everywhere. This angle is looking into the driver compartment. Um, you can see our handbrake we did. This is aero tube that's kind of has good sculpted cuts in it. It's capped and it feels perfect. Um, it's a it's a streamlined tube. It's lightweight, but it's extremely strong. It's chromoly um, and it's built to fit a hand, you know. So that was like a nice detail to send off on this thing. And then it's just wide open controls like we talked about. There's no special face of the dash or the instrument panels. Everything is accessible. You know, if you need to check stuff back there, you can get back there. Um, you know, like it, you know, same with the throttle control modules. Um, there's redundancy. So there's your foot pedal and your linkage here. And then there's two throttle control modules. You'll use one. If one fails, it's a quick unplug and then plug into the next one right here next to you. Uh, your brake bias adjuster from Geyser Brothers is right here. I'm like reaching over from the other side. Uh, impact mount. And then your dead pedal. Um, the dead pedal, I, I just, I believe in dead pedals so much. They're such a simple and easy thing to do. And that's all in line. So you can use that lower portion. Use this lower portion as like a heel stop and just operate like front, like your top of your foot braking. And then when you really need to get in it, you can, you can go above that thing and smash on these things. And then you have that whole room over there for impact. Um, same thing with your battery living here. There we go. I'm like in a weird angle here. And then all of our service panels are on. Battery cut off. And this is the same kind of concept here, right? So I'm over in the passenger seat and you want it like same with the battery cutoff. We don't want to have that thing in a spot where only the driver or only the co-driver can reach it. This needs to be a, a shared thing. Um, so it's, it's primaried over on the driver, but passenger side can reach this if need be. Uh, it's not something where he's isolated from it. You can see there's a couple support standoffs coming off the chassis, uh, going to the middle roof panel just to add some rigidity. I think that kind of sums up what we got in here. I guess you can check out the radiator back here. That's pretty much your real estate is consumed by a radiator um, all through, you know, the back wall. There's a little bit of slip here for air to get through the top. Um, so it's just not congested. Um, and then there's that, there's kind of a teardrop panel here. So your, all your, your trans is all living in the lower portion. This is like your belt line of the B pillar. Trans cooler is all the way down through here behind the seats. If it can focus on any of that. And then, yeah, your radiator just takes up huge real estate. And there's an oil cooler down there too. So you can see the partition in the cooler. Um, Clint did an amazing job. Clint owns CBR. 
and he's his turnaround and like his customer service is awesome and Clint I really appreciate you working with us uh, Clint's worked with us on multiple other projects and I just there's no other no other option as far as I'm concerned so I think we'll um, close this thing out do a little bit of talking and uh, you know if the thing is if, if we launch this thing and you guys have some other stuff that you saw on the car that you wanted me to go over um, it'll just be it'll be at this facility uh, for a bit it's not like under under our studio area but it'll be at this facility so if you need to if you have questions or things of interest that you want me to go back and cover I have no problem going and doing that for you just leave it in the comments Like I've mentioned before, this is a, a newer business. We're coming on our fourth year. Uh, every project's been exciting. Every project has been a journey. Every project has had challenges and the gains you get from getting through them are, are priceless. Um, I want to cover some of that with this. This, this thing has served as a challenge. Um, there got to a point and like, without going into like crazy details, um, there, I quoted this thing, um, I quoted it retardedly low. Uh, when I look at it now, I can't believe it. I'm like, what was I thinking? Um, we are not a shop that does your run of the mill fabrication. It has never been that way. If we have to do a tab, if we have to do a window net tab, then it's gonna be an angled dynamic gusset that's a two in one that's got style and functional design in it. If we have to do anything like that, that's how it goes because that's what our, our brand is. Uh, we do designer fabrication. So there was not a way for me to cut a corner on this. We, it's not an option. I don't, I don't do that. We don't cut corners. We don't do things a different way or on a budget way. We do things one way. Um, and I've really had to, to, bite a lot of bullets on this thing uh, with that. And I essentially quoted this thing at a third of the scope of work. Uh, and even, you know, not like I didn't even include the rear arrow on that, on that quotation. Uh, there got to a point where, um, you know, I hurt my wrist, right? So let's think about this. And, you know, if you guys want to follow this, I just, I have to do this because this is me sharing my story and there's you know whether there's someone out there who gets something from this or not it doesn't matter it's just our process and our journey here is what's most important and that's what I've always been signed up for here um, January 1st 2023 broke my hand off of my arm um, eight screws and a weird looking plate that was right when we were supposed to start on this thing put a huge dinger it was like it was something where I couldn't even hold a pin it was so detrimental I'm left-handed and I I've drawn my whole life and I literally I, I like I didn't know what to do I was stuck and I relied on the guys to to get through as much of this as we could um, we got way to the end of the budget like really fast um, it just by honest work uh, and things taking longer like I said it's just I think there's a way to build a race car and there's people that will build it like that and there's people that will build it like this. Uh, and, and that's what we do. It, it's never gonna change. So when it came time to negotiate and try to extend this budget, there was, there was no wiggle room. Um, and it turned into a thing where I can say, hey, come get your shit, um, we're done. I can't, I'm not gonna just keep working on this thing. Uh, or, you know, I can go, hey, I need to take this win I need to persevere here and accomplish this for the sake of doing it and to commit to something like that. And I, I had several reasons for doing that. Um, I talked to several people that I consult with in the industry about this car in particular and the gains from making a financial sacrifice on this thing. Uh, and that's the most important part. It, I don't want to sit and 
bitch about how much money uh, we're out on this thing or, you know, what kind of a hole it put me in. I would rather just talk about like the gains from it. And I, I did a lot of this work, especially in the rear, in this, this mode of like putting my head down and shutting the fuck up and doing it out of principle to get it done and not for a monetary value. And it was some of the toughest times I've ever had where I'm building something so incredible and like, and I, I'm having to do it out of my own fate to do it versus out of knowing that it's going to put, it's going to provide for my family or help the business. And man, we did a lot of that. Um, we, you know, when it came down to finishing strong on this thing, this is, there's three guys on this thing for two months straight. And if you start doing the numbers on that, it's a lot. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, that's just something that I had to uh, come out of pocket on and, and do for, for the sake of finishing it. Um, felt depleting to a, uh, to an extent um it's a lesson that i learned i know exactly that's the thing like if you know you can chalk it up as a mistake if you're doing something twice um, or you're you're running into the same thing over and over again and you're doing insanity that's where you're doing mistakes now the this thing navigating navigating different clients different people um I, i've said it before i like you're not a business that works with corporations you're you're a business that works with other individuals um, and other people, you know, seeking opportunities and, and that have their own MOs. And with this, that's the same way I have to take it is it's just, it's a lesson. It's beautiful. And the, the biggest thing there is no matter what adversity we faced, we did the absolute best we could on this entire car. We did not cut corners or say, fuck it or fuck this or any, it, it's, we did the best we could. Uh, and, and that's what I wanted to to have and hold hold close is that no matter what, however that went or whatever that looked like, we did the absolute best we could on it and we finished strong. And there's something to be said about doing that. Um, it's nothing I would do again or repeat. Uh, I Like I said, I know my errors. Now, the pivot here, let's look at it for, for other opportunities besides that because I'm not here to be negative about this. The, the other pivot, is what an opportunity, what a beautiful opportunity. Like I don't, it has never been my dream to build a trophy truck. I don't have aspirations of building race cars. I think pre-runners are cooler than trucks with fiberglass or carbon cabs and body panels. It's just, I like pre-runners. I like things that resemble some kind of sealed cab manufactured vehicle that have trophy truck skeletons to them. Um, but to be able to get an opportunity where Chris and Kevin trusted us to construct something that they're going to use that's their dream vehicle. They, they, this has been in their sights since they were children. And to be able to take something and create this for someone that, that is going to use this to race and risk their lives and be competitive and use for years and years to drive as hard as they can, as fast as they can, um, and to do it to the best of our ability and use all the best parts. Like Kevin did not cut corners on any of these parts. Um, everything down to the wheel size because of weight and like, like everything was thought out. And to be able to be handed that and say, hey, will you build this car for us? And here's all this. And then on top of that, for Kevin to have space to work with me. Uh, I'm sometimes not easy. Uh, especially when someone's very particular on what they want to, you know, to be able to mesh like that um, and to have a toxic ex-boyfriend out there or a toxic boyfriend, take that out because he's not an ex. He's just toxic. Um, to be able to work with someone like that and to have phone calls back and forth on almost every single thing we've done has been like thought out, not just through my brain or Colin's brain, but also with Kevin or whoever, you know, James Lynn or Evan Weller, um, like to be able to consult all the time and, and work through a complete assembled and built trophy truck start to finish is priceless. And there's something to be said about that, that in itself, um, you know, I got, I got paid to an extent to do that. 
and to get all this knowledge and to know how to construct something. And now everything we learn here and everything we've learned with accessibility and packaging, this all can be applied into everything else we build. It's all just like more stuff to file in into a portfolio of growth and knowledge. The next step, aerodynamics, working with Ben. Um, ben has 30 plus years in aerodynamics um, and circle track and NASCAR and all kinds of stuff in North Carolina, back east and, and extreme amounts. He is, he is completely educated in aerodynamics and to be able to not just work with him, but to build a relationship with him and to have him as a friend. Uh, I've been able to gain knowledge where I've, I've literally been taught by someone how things should flow and how things should work and why they do that. I mean, that's a huge opportunity. That's something to look at. Uh, and that's why I say, you know, this thing, it needs to be looked at for what it is and, and it doesn't necessarily matter the context of all the, the, the ups and downs in between. Hey, Austin. That's a hard working, that is a hard working dude. I would say one of the hardest, uh, that kid's awesome. Um, that's a huge opportunity, right? And, and that's just, this as a whole has been a blessing. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm grateful. Um, I, you know, to, to call this like a career and a job and to wake up like whatever stresses I have going on with our business, you know, and whatever that looks like, at the end of the day, this is what I'm waking up to build these kind of things and with clients that share that same passion um, to, that want us to construct these unique amazing vehicles and that's the biggest blessing in the world I couldn't ask for more than that so um, this is the spec truck I hope you guys enjoyed this thing I wish we could have covered more episodes on it like I said there was about three we can we either have to figure out how to censor them or we do it really rude and we just you know, stuff like that where I just talk and you just watch hands fly and that's it. Uh, we'll be clever or we just don't post them at all or upload them at all. But really, um, this has been a journey and it, it equated to something beautiful. And I really, this is like a timestamp for this thing because I, I believe in this car. I believe in all that stuff in the back. Um, I believe in every single detail we've done for this thing to cut air and to move through the air and to be planted and stabilized. Uh, and I think it's gonna set a precedent for years to come as far as the racing and the unlimited truck industry, uh, as far as development and, and how to get through the desert faster. So I think that's it. Um, you know, again, I th maybe my third time apologizing for my blown out throat, uh, but it is what it is. I, I figured it's better to just keep it real than to delay it anymore. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this thing. Like I said, it, it'll be here for a little bit. So if you have any questions or comments on stuff, I can probably circle back and I'll even take time, like maybe out of the week or something, and I'll cover something individually for you. We'll post it as like a short or something. If you just want to comment um, on those things, we'll like, between Joey and I, we'll note them and get them, and then I'll try to shoot them for you guys. So I hope you enjoy this thing. This is the Aerospec truck. All done. Like, comment, subscribe.